Welcome. I used to be the county auditor for Dunn County for about 31 years and property tax calculations was always, always very interesting. I think one of the things that I learned is that until you sit down and actually do it, it's really tough to understand, but I'll do my best trying to explain exactly how property taxes work, how valuations are created, how calculations are made, and what mill levies are. Each piece or parcel of land within a county is valued. There's a value put on it. Uh, several different ways to put the value on it, but each parcel of land and improvements, each quarter section, each uh, lot and block, uh, every building, unless it's a farmstead, most farmsteads are exempt from taxes if they meet certain criteria, which we won't go into today. But each piece of property is a value put on it. Now if it's farmland, grazing land, ag land, that determined is determined, the valuation is determined by the NDSU Extension Agent, or not the agent, excuse me, by the NDSU Extension Service out of Fargo. And it's based upon production, interest rate, input costs. And this formula has been developed by the legislation over the years and it gets tweaked every now and then so that the uh, value is actually production rather than associated with what it sells for. Now commercial property, property that's not ag land, property that is uh, a business, whether it be in the country or be in town, a commercial business is valued by sales. In other words, you have to have a record of the number of sales you have had in your county and that goes to the state and the state looks at it and says, okay, your property, commercial property, needs to be valued at X number of dollars because that is what it's show, selling for. And they control that. They tell you, you know, you got to raise your property 5% or 10%, your commercial property values or your lower them, whatever it takes. Residential property is also determined by sales. So if you're selling property within a town, a residence, that property value that is pu placed on it for taxing purpose is determined by the sales. Again, same thing. Tax department looks at it and says, nope, you're too low, you got to raise all your value. Uh, no, you're too high, you got to lower all your values. Well, a lot of counties over the past couple of years have went through reassessments and hired a, a firm to come in and actually reassess the counties to get the values where they should be so that everybody's paying on the same fair rate as to exactly what your property is worth. And then there's centrally assessed property. Pipelines, power lines, railroads, gas processing plants, public utilities, those values are all put on by the state tax department and the counties have very little if anything to do with that. So the assessed value is half of what the value is. True and full value is what it's called. Okay, they put uh, NDSU extension says my quarter section of land based upon a price per acre is worth $50,000. We divide that in half. That becomes the assessed value. We take it times 10%. That becomes the taxable value. And that taxable value is what the county auditor works with as they set the taxes based upon the budget requests. Ag property is, is assessed at 10% of half of the full value. Why? I don't know. That's the way it works. Commercial ag and centrally assessed is 10% of the half of the full and true value. And residential property taxable value is 9% of the half of the true and full value or full value. So we get a $40,000 piece of property, well, let's call it a quarter of land, we take it times 50 and then times 10, times 50% and times 10%, you get a $2,000 taxable value for that quarter section of land. 
if you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home you take it times half fifty percent times nine percent you get six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars taxable and you have a commercial shop that's worth a million bucks and you take that again times fifty percent times ten and you get a fifty thousand dollar taxable value. total of all the taxable values from all types of property within the county equals the county's taxable valuation or the tax base for example let's take a county that for even numbers has a five million dollar residential or excuse me ag land five million residential five million commercial five million centrally assessed these are taxes tax values based upon what we talked about earlier true and full times fifty percent times nine or ten percent so now we have a co county tax base taxable valuation of twenty million okay let's say that the county agents budget on this is forty thousand dollars you divide that forty thousand by 20 million and you get 0 0.002 or two mils. A mil is 0 0.001 of a number and in this case this number is a taxable value. 0 0.002 times that $40,000 quarter of land which and I'll had a tax base you remember of 2000 you get to pay four bucks per quarter and if you're living in a $150,000 home that two mils on that $150,000 which equates to 6750 in taxable value times 0 0.002 would equal $13.50. Now there's a maximum mill levy, mill levy worksheet that is used by the auditor to calculate mill levies and to stay within the mill levy allowed by law. Now a couple of sessions ago the uh, legislature set a difference in funds they combined a bunch of funds and so you have to have within your general fund are a lot of different funds the county used to levy for uh, those are now combined and you have to have a certain amount of mills that you maximum amount of mills that you can levy so that's that has changed but anyway as the county auditor calculates the mill levy she has to stay within the mill levy allowed by law or he what that is is that the state legislature has set a maximum amount of mills for each particular budget and fund as well as you all know extension service now in order to do all of this calculating you must use the largest amount levied over the last three years as a base year additions and deletions of value from previous years like I said this is like a 25 30 line levy sheet that you can use or have to use to determine your maximum amount that you can levy and still stay within the law. The sheet is used for each entity that the county is responsible for setting the mills for and the county does set the mills for everybody for the cities, the schools, the fire districts, the water districts, the ambulance districts, soil conservation districts, um, all those different various funds and agencies that levy taxes. The assessment set on all properties as property values increase does not necessarily mean that your taxes are going to increase. Uh, that's one thing that's hard to understand. If my property goes up, don't my taxes go up? Maybe and maybe not. If everybody's taxes go up, or excuse me, everybody's property value goes up, that should mean that the tax mill levy should stay a little bit less than it was before in order to maintain the same amount of money taking in. The Board of Equalization attempts to equalize values for like property and that's city boards, county boards and then finally you end up with the State Board of Equalization. Budgets have more of an effect on mill levies than assessments and the overall tax bill for the property owners unless you gain a substantial increase in new property. As you increase new property values, as you build, buildings come up, businesses start, your tax base will go up. And theoretically, as you get more property to tax, your mill levy should go down if your budgets allow that to happen. In other words, if you constantly need more money and 
you know normally that's the way it goes with the uh, inflationary things everything costs go all costs go up then sometimes yep we have to raise taxes unfortunately but budgets and taxable valuations need to work hand in hand